Right. So keep on Netflix for a bit now. Um, now we're going to talk about, uh, well, I should say the latest film from writer slash director Dan Gilroy. Um, we reunites yeah. him with both Jake Gyllenhaal Hall and Rene right. Russo. Uh, right. This, yeah. Who? Well, they work together on the excellent, excellent, excellent Nightcrawler. Crawler. Yes. Yeah, I would say one of the best movies of the 2010s. I know you told me a great movie. That was like 2014. Yeah, that was one of my favorite that I. Yeah. Uh, this show here is called Velvet Buzzsaw. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I don't know. if Just from a title like this, Red, I was like, okay, what is this, Red? Like, is this just weird, quirky title that's supposed to sound edgy and it's supposed, like, for the sake of being edgy and quirky, right. like, what is the point of all this? But, um, and then and then the trailer came out. I'll talk about that trailer in a bit, though. But, um, yeah, that trailer came out and I was like, um, what? What? But... Yes. This scene, he, he was seeing Jake Jill Hall, Reddy Russo, Tony Collette, uh, my boy David D, um, David Dig, sorry, yeah. and this scene, Dan Gilroy's name on it, I was like, all right, yeah. I need to see this. And yeah. this well, year, it's it, it, it coming out in net, on Netflix too. Well, I know it had a limited theatrical release or something like that, but right. coming out on Netflix, too, and not in t- and not um, not uh, worldwide, I would say on theaters. I was like, all right, well, this had to be a big deal now. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, before we start, I kind of worried that Dan Gilroy might be a bit of a wanted wonder. Um, what? He, he did. Um. Well, yeah, I know he do movies before Nightcrawler. I was big, but I don't know anything before Nightcrawler off the top of my head with him. But he did um that but that lawyer movie with Denzel Washington, and that was kind of a, a flop. All right. Um, that Roman G is real Esquire. Right. I was supposed to watch <laughs> that. That fell flat. And yeah. he did this and this. Have a great premise that he can I am gonna straight up say it. This was kind of a squandered premise. Um, I don't think this was bad, but given the talent involved and what it could have been, eh, he kind of blew it a little bit. No, I, I didn't hate it, but it's like, yeah, you could have do more with this. Like, I, I, I liked it, but I wanted this to be this could have been better. Whatever. All right, I would agree with you, um, with in that respect, but um, thing was with me though is that. I saw what he was getting at. Like, I, 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 right. I knew what he was going for, but right. it's just he had a problem just kind of balancing um, balancing these these genres out. Because basically in this film, oh. we get two genres. Like, we get your supernatural yeah, horror stuff, right? Yeah, that, that's the problem. It's like these two tones going on. Here's the thing with it. Again, tonally is a problem because if it was, I kind of mock, well, when I started watching it, I was like, oh, this kind of reminds me a little bit like Dragon to Hell now. In the sense that is a premise that you're supposed to be taken seriously at face value, but you realize it's more a send-up a send of a format. Because it's a right, horror right. format, but it's a more parody at the same time kind of vibe. And that's what I was getting from it. I was like, yeah, yeah this, making, this making fun of a lot of, uh, you know, um, art well, culture. I, 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 yeah, I was going to say arty farty, but yeah, that art exactly. culture. Yeah, it's that, really just like it, it um, just, a send-up of, of that lifestyle, that, that bougie that lifestyle. Whole that. Lifestyle the street behind the scenes you know all of the the, the mindset of it um i i thought jake general was great in this you know to, to be oh, fair he was he was excellent to this in fact everybody was good to this um all the actors were great it's just the, the script needed a, a couple a punching up because this could have been much better if they knew what they were doing with it the script needed more time like it could have do more two or more three um run throughs and it could have worked better um, yeah I, yeah I, I would agree i would agree right so on fact, the director, right. bad the director isn't bad either. Um, I thought it was okay in that sense. Um, and then all the actors were great. And well, they had their boy from Blind, Blind Spotted in it. It had yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and and they give him they give him quite well. I, 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 honestly, I kind of expected that they would give him more things to do. But when he was there, the man owned it, and I actually like his character in relation to yeah, all the like Bushi the was going on. I, 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 he was he was a character I could actually relate to. Well, he was, he was a character I could relate to more than anybody else, to be honest. Right. Anyway, before you can continue, what is what is Velvet Buzz all about, Matthew? Basically, this it's it's set in Miami Beach, right? And we following yeah. the light. Well, sorry, we following the. Just basically the life of this critic, this art critic. His name is right. Morph Van der Walt, played excellently yeah. by Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, yeah. He goes to his art exhibition and it's just like all this kind of weird stuff. Like, all right, like you'll get your traditional paintings and stuff, right? Cool, normal. But then they had this one guy who had the who was doing robotics. He had something called yeah, Ho Ho Man. 
And in my head, I was telling myself, all right, is this like, uh, like a, fi- like, is this in the near future or something like that? No, or no, no. Is this it's just like, no, this is no, no, no. Yes, no. All right, all right. Yeah, no, at first, at first, robots, I was wondering. It's not plenty of robots like that exist already. And it's an art project. It wasn't like an actual person or anything like that. It's like, you know, people just play robots in the street or whatever. It is in, in Amsterdam or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, there's also this big gigantic sphere, what they call it, the sphere there. And yeah. it's supposed, like, if you push your hand into one of the holes, it's supposed to give you this, I don't know, this sensory experience. It's, it's just all kind of stuff going on, right? Yeah. And Morph is just the type of guy that he, he just kind of buys into his old crap there. So, like, he will just, like, yeah. berate, like, in, in, with the case of the homo man, he just berates him there. It's like, this is not art, this is crap, you know what I mean? But right, everything right, right. else is just like, yeah, I could just more or less come up with some kind of ship it, you know, some kind of ship it thought about it and just roll with it, basically, right? So, um, his agent, uh, Josephina, she's played by Zawe Ashton. Um, I think this is the first time I ever saw her in a film. I don't know if I ever saw in anything else, but she looks familiar, right? But basically, yeah. um, she works for this art gallery owner. Her name is Rodora, who's played by Rene right. Russo. She was formerly of a member of a rock group called Velvet Buzz. So, and in the back of her neck, uh-huh. she has a tattoo of the right. group. And, uh, I hated that ending, that boy. Yeah, Foreshadowing, that's all I was saying. No, yeah, but, I did what they did with that. I, I know, but I, I kind of get what it's trying to do because, like, all right, but still, why is this movie called Velvet Buzz So? And then right, that happened. Just... It's like, oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so more of trying to live your life, you know, things not going right with his, uh, well, his boyfriend Ed. So he tried to start back this relationship with, um, with Josephina because they had an affair before, right? But yeah, while all okay. this is going on, um, Josefina, uh, well, the, the apartment in, that she lives in, um, this guy in the past um, ended up dying, right? So he just, his body is like outside of his apartment, the, the door of his apartment, basically. She goes right. inside and then she realizes that this man just have like a bunch of paintings, right? All these kind of weird, dark stuff, right? And Italy told you a little bit all based off the, the life that he had. It was very, well, he had an abusive dad and he even ended up going into this uh, mental asylum because it's just deep, dark stuff that was going on in his life, right? So, Josephine was like, all right, well, this, 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 these pages can't just go to waste. You can't just dumb them. So, she shows yeah. um, Rodora it and she's like spellbound by it. She's like, all right, cool. Well, I'm going to put this up in this art gallery. Um, and then, well, they, when he was trying to move the, um, the, the art about um, the guy who, well, they hired this guy basically to transport this stuff and put it in his warehouse for safekeeping. Right. Uh, something kind of terrible happens to him. Some, some really yeah. weird happens and he dies, right? And that's just one of many things that happened to particular characters in the show, including Morph. <laughs> Can you kind of establish that when you do see, like if you, is that if you see the, the one of the paintings or you, or you well, kind of yeah, watch the painting? It's, no, I think it, yeah, I think it's basically once you try to profit off it, because again, he, he, the plot, they, they address what the person gave instructions about the art itself right. and what you should do with it. And that was, yeah, basically if you try to profit or, or cater to it in any way, um, that is when things go wrong. You're right. Yeah, so basically, yeah, if you if you try to profit uh, from it, if you tr- want to make money off it, or even if you buy it, <laughs> yeah. yeah, something terrible and dark and brutal will happen yeah. to you. You know, characters will die in like the weirdest ways possible. It gets bloody eventually with, with you know, and, and more messed up with uh, with each death. And yeah. it's just basically about Morph trying to deal with all that whilst trying to get his life in order. And that's all I want to say about the show before um before well, yeah, that's all I want to say before um well without spoiling anything, right? So um Ricardo, uh well anything else you want to say about the well good things about the show. Um, in your opinion, oh, the it good just things. mentioned bad stuff. Uh, no, the good things. Um, I actually thought it was pretty funny. Um, when it was when it was trying to be humorous, I actually thought it was hilarious, especially Jake Gyllenhaal and his moments. Um, yeah, his it, character it, in general was yeah. was hilarious, way. Right? But yeah. it was it was but it wasn't like what I was worried about. Like I thought he was going to be like this caricature of right. uh, art critic, though. But he well, he's it's so I mean, multi-layered. That's... Whereas like he could kind of be a caricature at times, but he's a, he's his own person. Though. Yeah, but that's what he was. I mean, he was a kind of caricature of, of the art critic. Now, this this person who don't like anything and constantly critiquing. Like, that is one moment in a funeral, which is hilarious. I thought. Oh my! Think... <laughs> the man was critiquing the color, the, the, the color of the casket, and I was like, "Nah, boy." I was like, "Stop right. it! Just, just stop it! Just hush it up." 
Right. Um, Lots stuff like that. Um, all the, again, all the great characters. Rene Russo was good in this. Um, what's this fellow name, boy? Oh, gosh. Um, Malkovich. He was good in this. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. How we could forget. John Malkovich was in it as well, too. Um, yeah. He was this kind of, like, seasoned um, painter. And yeah. basically, he was, like, trying to find inspiration again. There's right. a scene with him in, at the very end where and, I was sure what it meant, but I guess he but, found inspiration as well. Uh, see. But this is the way how they set it up. This didn't make any sense to me. Right. Well, I, I kind of get why it was. Like, it, given, his car, given his character and what, what Ren Russo told him, um, I uh, knew what was going on there. But again, in the context of the film, it didn't really tie in. Now, look, I don't know if that is in itself a critique of art films in itself where, you know, oh, well, you know, you don't need completeness and you could interpret blah, 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 blah. That bullshit, right? You know, I mean, you know, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, 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 that's a good point you touch on there, you know, if it's, it's the same a critique argument on last art week, films right? too. Yeah. No, you had the same argument last week about art films, right? <laughs> um, oh, yes, and, with um, Suspiria, yeah. Right, exactly. And this, this film, I just thought it was just felt, I want to go as far as saying unfinished, but they could have done more with it, as I say. I said that before, he could have done little ideas with it. And with his character, I get what he was doing there with his character because it makes sense in terms of a character arc, but didn't tie into the film. I didn't get what was, why it was relevant necessarily. Um, so I didn't hate it. It was like, okay, it's just this kind of somber ending to the whole situation. Like, and you can say that he was kind of ignorant of what was going on. You know, so when he come back, what the fuck you going, how are you going to react now? You know, because maybe he's totally isolated. Um, yeah. Whatever. Uh, my, 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 my thing is, though, as, as you were such as you was talking about tones and stuff, right? Yeah. How I saw it, I felt that he was hitting the the satire stuff, the social satire stuff, way better than the horror stuff. Like this, exactly. there is horror elements in it, eh, but it you just had a wait for it to come. And I kind of get from Gilroy's perspective, like maybe he just wanted this to be a slow burn, but oftentimes it was like um. What it reminds me of more, like, uh, like I saw some people that like, kind of make the reference of a. Uh, I remember a movie called The Player. No. It came out in '92. Um, I think Robert Altman directed. Sorry. It's basically a critique on Hollywood. Now. So it's about okay. these agents and directors and all that kind of stuff. And what right. was the selling point for it is that it just had this wide cast and there's a bunch of celebrities in it. That's how it. Right. Well, it, I, I was getting that vibe from it at first. Now, where it's like. All right, this is a critique on the art where people want to feel good, so you have to buy this, you know, um, portrait from this guy and whatnot, and you feel good about yourself, right? But then I was getting like a Mulholland Drive kind of feel to things, where if you remember right, that, right. that had a, uh, a, a, well, kind of a, well, not entirely, but it had a critique on Hollywood as well too. The whole movie itself is a critique on Hollywood, and you know, just about the style of film noir and what we see as yeah. real and all that kind of stuff there. That, right, right, I, right, I right. felt that the, to, the, the, the tonal um, shifts with that work better than here, than um, this movie right. here. Now. This one is more like, all right, we're going to spend a lot of time focusing on Morph and the world that he's in. And then when it gained deep into it, deep into it, then we'll throw some weird into it. Some right. really messed up. So really, it's just the bad. The, um, the, the, there was, it, it should have been a better balance in those tones, man. I felt that. He was focusing right. more on the on the social stuff, but he did that way better. And when it comes to yeah. the horrific stuff, like it did, yeah. and it was it was effective, but it was effective because it was I, something that happened. But I, well, looking, I did, at it, yeah. looking at it, no, it's kind of like yeah, you could have had, but you could have had some more of it too. You could have right. pieced things me, out better. I, yeah, yeah, right. that, that was my problem with it. I find if it, if you're doing the tonal stuff, keep it consistent in that sense. And I again, um, you know, again, morning, morning, quarterback in. To me, I find you should have, if anything, you make the deaths play out more funny, you know? Um, so you, yeah. you keep a human angle going, you know? Like, if, it, if they went in that direction, it would have worked. But no, they decided to do this, like, Eldridgean kind of Lovecraftian kind of paradigm going on. And nothing about it made sense in terms of, like, when you find out what the guys, well, the quote-unquote backstory of the source of all this. When that information came out, I was like, well, that is it? Like, that, that is the cause of all of this? Like, I thought well... you could have done well, here's, here's I, the thing, right? Here, here's the thing. Well, sorry to cut you. Here's the thing, right? I was more looking at it like, well, all right. So you know that um, the Twilight Zone reboot supposed to come out sometime in April, right? With um, John Peel helm in it. So like when right. I was looking at it like nearly, and I told myself, all right. So I could try to figure out exactly what going, like something that justify everything that happened with the paintings, or I could just look at it as, oh, this could have just been like a Twilight Zone episode. And to me, that was that's how it felt like to me, like. 
if this if, if this was like short, like an hour short, because this movie clocks in two hours, this would have made for a great Twilight Zone episode, nah. like the reboot, nah. Cause yeah, it does have that kind of vibe where things happen, like real weird things happen, but you're not sure why. But it all has a result of something that the characters do. Right. It. It's what the characters still, do that know, led I... to what happened. But what happened isn't explained. And that that's that's the mystery, you know, that's the that's the horror that that you know, um the movie leaves behind. Her, you know, so yeah. I looked at it like that. But I do agree with you where they could have just kind of even things out so it makes sense in the end now why yeah. these things happen. This kind of because it happened. And I probably fully agree with you. Um, if I didn't watch, if I didn't just watch Russian Doll, because Russian Doll is exactly where you should be doing the Twilight Zone episode. Um, that's what it felt like, like a really good, you know, extended Twilight Zone type. There. So I was like, no, but Russian Doll had an arc and it was very clear what they're trying to do and so on, so on, so forth. Right, and, you're right. They, they, they really should have had an arc with, with these characters. And for one thing, though, like, I like the, the point that I like the fact that they. Like let me just say, all the lead actors get a chance to shine, even the yeah, 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 no. David Dixon, like, even though he didn't really have a big role to play there. But yeah. um, I felt like character acts just kind of stop. Like with David yeah. Dixon, it kind of stops. He makes a decision out of the blue, and that's yeah. the end of it. Margaret yeah. makes a decision, and that's the end of it. Um, Natalia Dyer, who plays, uh, I think she was like the former secretary of uh, Rene Russo's character. She just right. makes a decision and that's it. Or you saw her like, like near the end, she do something. But it's like, what does that say about her leading on, on the future? That, it just kind of stops now. And then on top of that, I, I didn't care for, you know, how they kill off some of these people. Because the deaths themselves um, was like, all right, well, that's how they're dead? Like, wait, what? Like, okay. Like, I get it doing the whole Final Destination thing. But it, it, didn't, it didn't, like, impact me now. And again, it just felt it just ultimately felt unfinished now. Yeah. Um, they were, they were, the, the first few are fine could have, they could have done so much more with it. Um there, there, there is one slight spoiler involved in this sphere. I thought that was the best. And then the one with the Velvet yeah. saw thing. Well with Renny well with, with Velvet Buzz saw. That was I, well I, 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 I laugh at it, but then at the same time I was like, all right, that was just so what's he was he would? Um almost like the like it was like a, a, a like the director's choice there. Not so much. Yeah. Oh, this is what the paintings do. Okay, they didn't yeah, really uh, talk the paintings. Just, this, this is how it ends, right? So boom, it happens. No, but is my problem is that when they, as I said, when they explain what's going on in terms of like, well, what the source of all of this source, and like, wait, that is the reason why this happening, and they didn't explain Speaking. like what the real source of it was. And again, if they played for joke or played humorous, it would work. Like if they kept it humorous the entire time, it could have totally worked. Tension yeah. that went into like designing the death scenes were cool. Like just the way how the film built tension, I thought worked great, right? Um, and it really does feel like a thriller, like a real thriller. And you know, when 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 it calls for it. But um, yeah, I felt some of the deaths was kind of like, all right, this is it. They did have a funny bit involving um N- Natalia Dyer, um, where she kind of walks into people getting dead um dead already. I thought that was funny. And how it played out, like, with the last death involved uh, with her, I thought that was cool, too. I, I thought that the, well, that death, that third death, I would say, I don't want to spoil anything beyond that. I thought that was the right. most effective one in any in, in movie, well, as, as far as I'm concerned. But now I'll talk about the trailer briefly. Uh, now, I, now I'm actually regretting that I saw that trailer. The trailer spoiled the deaths, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was, yes. this, so when I saw that, I was look- like, this is not, like, if I, if I didn't see the trailer... I'd be like, holy shit, this actually happened. But now, as, as right. I came in, came in with, with the knowledge of what to expect, as I came yeah, with the knowledge of, of what to expect, now, I was just like, yeah, but I wish I didn't see that, though. I wish I didn't I, see I, that. I, I, should, I should have gone into this one. I should have gone into it. If I went in more blind, I might have enjoyed it more. Um, you know, yeah, I, I, like... I have a feeling I, I would have enjoyed it, too, if I went in blind as well. But right. for what I got here, um, like, once again, I got where Dan Gilroy was coming from. And right. I guess if you look at it as a Twilight Zone episode, like an extended Twilight Zone episode, right. you would enjoy it. Um, yeah. And it is different. It is unique. And I do like how they really stick it to, you know, the, the bougie upper class world that, yes. you know, you and I, I, I don't really know come out of. Yeah, I, and, you know, those moments are great too. But I felt that, you know, if he had put equal emphasis on, you know, the, the horrific stuff, on the mystery box stuff, then we would have had a, a better movie. So I saw right. what he was going with, I saw what he was going for, but he just did the satirical stuff way better than, than the horror stuff. The horror stuff was just, eh, but the satirical stuff, lamb. Right. Especially with James yeah, Dillon's um, performance. I thought that 
he killed it with that uh, with that with that character. I, <laughs> I don't know. This scene, the most cute is yeah. like you know you 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 want to hate him, but at the same time, it's like I just laughing at you so much. You're just such a funny motherfucker. I just like you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I as I said, uh, for me, I could have done. Um, I you know I don't know. I just wish I just wish you could have sat down and make this work better in terms of you know the the tone and the approach and the script and have it just play out a little better. I see why you come on Netflix, but yeah, comparing it to something like Nightcrawler, which framed itself so brilliantly in terms of tone and what he was going for in terms of yes. um you know the the, the, the literal anti-hero narrative no? the, the, the subversion of the hero narrative in a, in a really pathological and disgusting way in that film um i really thought it could have done something with that involving the horror and whatnot but it just felt like an ultimately half-baked um project overall and I, in the case of nightcrawler i had no idea what i was going in to, to see i just saw the trailer and the trailer was kind of unclear about what the hell was going on um and then you, you found out yeah. Um, I don't, just this overall is, I really wish they could have do this over Jared. you know but you know films is films they had to finish it and leave it as this um, it's just unfortunate that he could, he could have, you know do a better job and, and bake it better now. Um, yeah. you know to a little bit of time you know one, more, one or two more minutes in the microwave right um, I, I don't know I don't know if this score I have it in my head I, I want to give it like a kind of 5 out of 10 um, alright it, it's just such a letdown especially given the talent involved now. you know you had yeah, all these yeah, great yeah involved yeah your boy from blind spotting coming true he was good in it um i forget the girls i don't know where she from the girl was he mean female leading this um yeah that, that that's what i'm um, talking about I, um uh zawi ashton like i yeah, never saw her in a film before but right like from i just can't remember yeah yeah, yeah. as i say you know it's a film that is slight disappointment they could have done more with it and yeah that's about it i um as i said five out of ten you know well, All right. Well, I I am actually much more fair to the movie than you. I would give this a decent three and a half out of five, man. It is worth checking out. Um, if you, well, I would say avoid the 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 trailer at all costs because it spoils the really shocking, horrific moments. Um, but if you just want to go in there, if you want to just watch a film with some really sharp satirical writing, and you know, there's these characters that seem larger than life. And yet have this kind of weird Twilight Zone esque um, element in it, and I mean, just how I describe this right now, you won't see a movie like this at all, boy. But I felt, given the premise, just how out there it is, they really could have done much more with it. Um, I mean, the, the cast is solid, solid throughout, I would say, um, and the direction is strong. There's some establishing shots before I forget. Some establishing yeah. shots for this, I was like, God damn, yeah. that is no, the establishing I... shots, boy. Yeah. yeah. That's like, the movie. Just shots of the city itself, like shots of the city itself. Yeah. I was like, wait, but, all right. That's shot. This is like Nightcrawler times three. Yeah. Right? Like again, that that dark new noir vibe from it now, and yeah. it does have this new noir feel to things, right? Just like uh, Mulholland Drive and the player, which I mentioned earlier. But with the horror premise, though, I felt that there wasn't enough time and you know effort put into those moments. And yeah, that that was a letdown for me as well. I felt they could have just approached both genres or both tones equally, and then you would have had a great movie. But for yeah. what it is, I mean, the, the cast makes the film work. I mean, it's well directed. Yeah. Um, the, the score was pretty effective by, um, as well, and you will be laughing quite a lot with this. Um, even with the even in the darker moments, you you will find yourself laughing with this. But yeah, I still say give this a look. Um, could have been better, but. It is worth it, right? I say give it a look. Right.